In this video, we'll take you through the process of creating a customizable welcome sign using one of our model projects. We'll do this in three easy steps. We'll have a browse through our Design & Make store for a Design & Make project that we can use to create our layout. We'll install the project, set up a job, create the layout, and add a bit of customizable text that we can be carved. And then finally, we'll develop a set of tool paths to cut the project with. For this project, we'll use vCarve Desktop, but keep in mind that all that we're doing can be done in vCarve Pro and Aspire. So here we are back at the Design & Make store. Let's go ahead and log into our account. Put there my email address, my password, and we'll sign in. Let's go ahead and find some content to make a house sign from. In this case, I want it to be a little bit more elaborate than just uh, one component. So I'll be looking for an actual model project. So let's go back to our home. And then I'm gonna go ahead and search all products for Waving Bear. This is a really popular project with a lot of our customers. Now you can buy the single solid model if you'd like to of this particular waving bear layout, or you can go ahead and have a look at this model project. Our model projects add lots of value to what you're getting from Design & Make. Not only do you get an assembled layout somewhere to start for a really quick project, but you also get all of the single models that we use to create that layout with. So in this case, we have two bear paws, a front and a back, the bear's face, two or three different sort of sign shapes that you can go ahead and use with the lovely um, texture, bark texture on them. They look really quite nice. We're gonna give you a included assembled layout and that's the same assembled layout that you see here, just with some V carving added to it. Again, with like all of our projects, you get a project sheet with that, it gives you all kinds of great information about how you can use this project. With this particular project that we see here, we have um, some samples from our customers that they've actually cut and finished. Some they haven't finished, but in the process of finishing, they look really, really quite nice. We have some food for thought images here as well. What you could decide to use is some of the models from this particular project and add into it some other models that you may have in your library already to create different sort of layouts like this one. This one here actually used the plank sign from Pop's Tool Shop. That's the center bit right here. At the bottom, we have the fonts that we had used and also some free outlines you can download if you'd like to, just to lay out a sign. For this particular sign that we're going to make, I think we're going to try and mimic this one right here. Um, I think it's lovely the way that the sign is slightly angled and the paws wrap around it. And we have obviously the bare head right in the middle and the words welcome on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add that to our cart. We'll go ahead and check out. Once we've paid and downloaded that, we can just go ahead and double click on the executable. Projects from Design & Make are delivered as an actual installer. So when you double click on those, they'll end up going right into your clip art tab in your software, unlike single models, which are slightly different, but these are really convenient to use. And I'll show you that in just a second, once we get our software open and start planning our project. Now that we have the project installed, we can go ahead and jump right into our Vectric software. The first thing we'll do is set up a job. Okay, now that I've downloaded my project and ran the installer, I can start into my software. So let's create a brand new file. This is going to be a single-sided job, and we're going to make the dimensions of this 24 inches across by 18 inches tall, and our material thickness is going to be one and a quarter inches thick. We're going to zero off our material surface. Our datum for right now is going to be set to the center, but when I go to develop my tooling, I'm going to move it to the bottom left. Because we're using 3D content, we're going to make sure that we choose very high modeling resolution. That way we're going to get the best details that we can from our content. And our material settings will just be light oak because I'm assuming that's what I'm going to use to cut this into. So now I can go ahead and click OK. Now that I've downloaded and ran the installer, I can go ahead and take a look at my clip art tab here. In the Design & Make folder, I can have a look for the waving bear sign. There it is right there. So you can see that the content's all been installed. I've got my included assembled layout. I've got my two bear paws, my happy bear face, my log slice, my rustic sign, and my rustic sign number nine. And then we also have our project sheet here for inspiration if we want. 
But for now, we're going to start off with our log slice. So we're just going to double click on that. In our 2D view, we'll hold down our shift key and we're just going to scale this up to be just about the, the right width that we need. Keeping in mind that our bear paws need to be added in later. That's great. And let's just go ahead and slide that down to around there someplace. Now let's go ahead and bring in our happy bear face. And again, we're going to need to hold down our shift key and grab that handle there and size it up to be just approximately the right size that we want it to be. Somewhere's around there. And let's just go ahead and drag that up place it there that looks pretty good let's go ahead and shift select our log and we'll just use our cursor keys and just nudge that down so it's more in the center of our page like that looks good now we're only going to use the bear paw backside so let's go ahead and double click on that and we'll place it where we want it to be we'll start with the bottom one here we want it to look like he's holding the majority of the weight in that paw let's scale it up just a little bit looks pretty good like that the size looks pretty nice and you'll see that i'm working in our software very organically placing them where they are and then slowly kind of making them sized properly for what i need looking straight down on my project i think that looks okay and then we're going to go ahead now and hold down our control key and drag and that'll make this a copy of this particular bear paw and then what I can do is just grab the control handle here for rotation and rotate it all the way around. So now it looks like we've got the other paw. We'll put it approximately where we want it to be. Now, what I'd like to do is angle the bear paws and the signs. Let's hold down my shift key and we're going to select all three of those things. And let's just rotate those just a little bit to kind of give them a bit of an angle. And that looks okay. Now we haven't yet looked at our 3D view yet. Now this is a good time to do that with that we have everything laid out in our 2D space. Let's just go ahead now and tile our views and see what we have. Now looking straight down in our 2D view, the proportions look pretty good. But as you can see that in our 3D view, there are some things that are wrong. Our bear paws aren't actually holding the sign and our bear uh, face could be moved up a little bit higher. So there's a bit of a gap between his lip and the sign. So the first thing I want to tackle is just to make sure that this sign shape is the right shape height to base everything else on. So let's select that, go to our modeling tab and go ahead into our component properties. And we'll take a look at our shape height. So right now it's at over well, almost one and a quarter inches. So let's make this 0.85 of an inch. And that'll give us a nice base to start from. Let's have a look at our head here. And that's, that's okay. And we can actually, what we might want to do is maybe just kind of tilt it just a little bit. And then maybe we can just kind of slide it up a little bit. So we have a little bit of a gap between his lip and the top of that board. Of, that makes it so our tool can get in there nice and easily. That looks great. Let's have a look at this paw up here. So to do this, we're going to need to actually use one of our options here, tilt or fade. In this particular case, tilt makes sense. We're going to tilt it from this end of our paw up over top of our assign. So let's just go ahead and choose choose tilt. We're gonna set our anchor point, one here and one over here. And we can just go ahead and angle that up just a little bit. So that kind of comes up through the sign. That looks pretty good. And let's add a little bit of base height. We'll add some material to the back of our paw. Oh, that looks really good like that. We can actually make that maybe two five and then we'll take our total shape height to make that up to a half inch and there we have it so it looks like the bear paw is kind of wrapping over top of that wood now what we're going to do is we're just going to keep in mind what we have here so shape height of a half inch base height of 0.125 an inch and then a tilt of about 0.8 so let's go ahead and grab this paw here we're going to do exactly the same so let's set our tilt from here to there and we'll make sure this is 0.5. We'll make this 125. And then we'll start this off at 7 degrees. And there we have it. And let's just see what we have here. That looks okay, except for we need to tilt this just a little bit more. Maybe what we want to do is actually just change our anchor points. Just to be more like that, maybe. Maybe it looks a little bit better. Maybe we just need to add just a little bit more base height onto this to get it to push through. And there we are. I'm really happy with that. That looks pretty nice. Let's take a look at that in our 3D view. That's great. Now, if we roll up on our edge, we're going to see that everything seems to be pretty much even across there. We probably could add a little bit more shape height to 
the face of our bear so that everything is kind of nice and even. But in order to figure that out, we need to know what the maximum height is of our actual full composite layout, which is what we see in our 3D view. And to do that, we can just go over to our scale option here. So let's click that. We'll see that the current height of the composite model is 1.24 of an inch. So let's just keep that in mind and let's cancel that. Let's grab the bare face. Let's go into our shape height here and let's change this to 1.15. Press the space bar and there we go. Close that down. And there we are. That looks pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. That's great. Now, Again, we're going to take a look at the overall shape of this. I think all of the components are scaled properly for each other, but in order to fit inside of our material, I think it needs to be a little bit thinner so we can end up adding some backing to it with our material. So let's go into our scale model height. We're going to set an exact height down here at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and make this one inch right on the money. Click apply, and then we'll close this down. That'll give us a quarter inch of backing so we can thicken up thicken up any of these thin areas that might be around and I'm pretty happy with that so let's just click OK. Let's tile our views again and let's think a little bit about the text that we're going to put on our sign. Let's go into our drawing tab and down to our draw text feature here. And we're going to type in the word welcome. Now we can go ahead and select the font that we want. I really do like this exotic font here. It looks pretty good, but of course you can choose any font that you have in your library, but I kind of like this one here. So we're just gonna click close and we're gonna place the text again, very organically where I think it needs to be. Obviously it needs to be in the center of the sign. We need to rotate it a little bit. Maybe scale it down just a little bit. And to get the, the best use out of the space on our sign, we may need to think about sort of repositioning our paws just slightly so that we can get the welcome text as large as we can. So let's grab this paw here. We're gonna use our cursor keys. Just kind of nudge it up and over a little bit. Looks okay. Let's see with this one here, we're gonna move it down a little bit. Maybe over a bit. That looks okay. And then we can nudge this down into place where it needs to be. It kind of needs to avoid this claw over there and get close to that claw there. We might need to actually size this down just a little bit so that we avoid all that. Like that. I'm pretty happy with that. In the end, that looks really great. Now that we have that all done, we can go ahead now and start to develop some tooling. Of course, we can change this all later if we'd like to, but right now this is a great place to start. So let's bring up our tool paths tab, pin it down, retile our views so we can see everything that we need to. Let's go ahead and set our material again. Again, the thickness is one and a quarter inches. We're gonna move our datum to the bottom left because we like the machine from that bottom left corner, at least I do. We're gonna zero off our material surface. We're gonna make sure that we push that all the way up to the very top of our material. And we're gonna set our rapid Z gaps and our home position safe and appropriate for our machine. And that looks great. And we'll click OK. Now, as usual, with anything that we give you or we show any tooling and any kind of software that we offer, we want to make sure that you guys take a look at that and look through all of the tooling, review it all, and make sure that it's safe and appropriate for your machine, the tools you have on hand, and the material you're cutting it into, okay? Safety first. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get an outline of this actual sign or what we want to cut out of it. In order to do that, we're going to hold down our shift key and we're going to grab all of the components that make up the perimeter of this composite layout. And we can go to our modeling tab and we, we can create a vector boundary from those selected components. And there we have it. We're going to use this for our profile cut and also to isolate our tooling. Let's go ahead. The first thing we're going to do is to create a roughing toolpath. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. We're going to use that selected vector. That's perfect. We're going to make a boundary offset. And for me, I like to make it equal to the diameter of my tool. We're going to leave a little bit of machining allowance behind for our finishing path to take care of. We'll use Z-level roughing. We're not going to worry about ramp or plunge moves. We're going to go ahead and delete that one out of there and just calculate that toolpath. As always, it's really important that you preview your visible toolpaths. If it doesn't look right here at all, then this is the time to go back and fix it. That's exactly what I was kind of hoping for. That looks really, really good. So let's close that down. The next toolpath we're going to do is going to be our finishing toolpath. So let's go ahead and select our 3D finishing toolpath. We're going to use the tapered ball nose end mill. 
If I wanted to change my tool, I just need to go ahead and select a brand new tool. If I want to take advantage of our rest machining, then I can go ahead and add in another tool, a smaller one to get in, to get some of the detail that I won't get with this, with the bigger tool. But in this case, this will be perfect for this size of a job and the material I'm cutting into. We're going to use that selected vector, which is great. We're going to use a raster strategy. So it's going to go back and forth, back and forth. I think what that'll do is if there's any machining lines left behind, they'll kind of follow the grain of my wood, which will be easier to remove and easier to hide. That all looks great. And let's go ahead and just change that to 3D finish and we'll calculate that. Okay, let's go ahead and preview our visible tool paths and see what we get. And that looks really good. I think we're getting a nice balance here. We're getting lots of detail in that bark texture there. And this face is coming out quite nice and sore as paws. I'm really quite happy with that. So let's close that down. The next thing you want to want to do is our V carving. So let's select our text, go and choose our V carving operation. Let's give it a slight start depth just to make sure that we get nice wide letters, nice clean letters. Um, we're going to go ahead and use a 60 degree V bit. That's great. We're going to want to make sure that we project this toolpath onto the 3D model. If we don't, it's going to start at the top of our material and we're not going to get the right or proper uh, machining that we need. So in this case, we want to project it right onto the top of that um, component there. So we can go ahead and calculate that. And we can preview our visible toolpath. That's what we're going to get. It looks really good. Let's close that down. The next thing we really want to do is do our profile cut. We're going to select that vector that we created earlier. We're going to go ahead and create a profile cut for that. We're going to start at zero. We're going to make sure we go down the thickness of our material, which is Z plus 0 0.02 of an inch. We're going to use that quarter inch end mill. We're going to cut outside this line. We're not going to worry about a, a separate last pass. Let's go ahead and add in some tabs. These are a good thickness and so on to work with for the material that I'm using anyway edit those tabs and we're going to place them manually here on our actual job. We'll put one there. We'll click one there, click one there and because they're easy to remove off radiuses like this. I can go ahead and put one on each ear and I think that'll be okay. Let's close that down. Let's go ahead and look further down our form here. We're going to go ahead and add ramp moves in. So we're going to do a spiral ramp. So that'll take some of the load off of our tool when we're cutting out this profile cut. We're not going to project this onto our 3D model and we're just going to rename this cutout and then we can calculate that. It's going to tell us we're going to cut through our material. That's perfectly fine. We'll just click OK. And let's preview our visible toolpath. And there we have it. And those tabs should hold that into place. Once I get that all cut, I can pop it off my machine, cut those tabs, a little bit of sanding, and then I can get right on to my finishing. That's going to make a great looking welcome sign. Well, there we have it. All there is now to do is to save off our toolpaths and send them off to our CNC. It's that easy to create a custom layout with one of our design and make CNC ready model projects and your Vectric software. That was just one layout. Imagine how many more you could create with just the single models in this project. Now, why not take it a bit further and add in some of the single models you already have in your library? Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter to keep on top of what's happening at Design and Make and follow us on your favorite social platform.